When you live in the red, that means you do what you do at full throttle. Wide open, 100% Texas tough. That's Allen Americans Pro Hockey. Come and experience the fast action of Americans Championship Hockey this weekend. The Americans host the Wichita Thunder Saturday at 7.05 and on Sunday at 2.05. For tickets, go to theallenamericans.com. Allen Americans Pro Hockey. Live in the red. Welcome to the Red, White, and You podcast. Tommy Daniels here. Pleased to be joined by my coworker and fellow friend, although he almost lost that privilege last year when he tweeted me right after his Arizona Cardinals took my Buffalo Bills down with the play is still being referred to as Hale Murray. Uh, what a great addition to our staff, Casey Ruzik. And also, you heard him on the broadcast with me uh, from time to time. Casey, first of all, uh, glad to have you on here. And uh, I know maybe more than anybody on our staff, you are excited about this year. You've got a whole lot of new play toys uh, in your audio video. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a really exciting offseason. And uh, I'm really excited for all the fans to see it for the first time on Saturday. Uh, you know, there's uh, there's still a whole lot of work to be done between now and then. They really they really didn't finish this thing 100% until about this week. So we're still learning a lot of things. And, you know, but uh, it's going to be really fun and exciting. And I think everyone's really going to like it. You and I are the two guys that are here late every night. I know last night, uh, I thank God for my intern, Brian. We were here until 9 o'clock. Getting closer, but not anywhere close to being done. But you have so many things that you have to get done between you know, graphics and, you know, everything that you have to build in the audio video room, player lineup, all that stuff. Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and just scream out loud? No, just because you, it's opening night and nothing's done. And I tell you what, I've had a couple of those dreams here over the last week and a half, just stressing out over things. It always seems to get done, but believe you me, there's always one or two things that slip through the cracks and you're, you're fixing that an hour before game time. Yeah, absolutely. That that totally happens. I'll give you an example. Last year, the the Ghost Tequila sponsoring the goal last year, they putting them on the 360. Uh, I I woke up one night, maybe like three days before the season start, with just a huge headache. Just couldn't get back to sleep. It was like 3 a.m. It's like two days before the season, two or three days, 3 a.m. I'm like, oh, I can't get back to sleep. I'm just gonna grab my computer and work. And that's when I made the Ghost Tequila 360. So I made it at like 3 a.m. one night. Just woke up. I was like, oh, I might as well get some work done. So yeah, it happens. And uh, yeah, it is a it is a lot. Uh, you know, everything that's been in our our video boards for the past 12 years of the team's existence is gone. So it's it's resizing all of it. It's uh, some of it. Some of it is just not usable anymore because of the resolution differences. So. It's a lot, but you know, it's, I don't want to make that sound like it's a sad thing. It's a good thing Like we're going to get new stuff and it's going to look really great. So it's just a matter of getting to that point, which we will get to. So how many video boards will fans be, be able to view this year at the Allen event center? Or excuse me, uh, it's going to take some time to <laughs> get used to the new name here. Um, Credit Union of Texas event center. How, how many new video boards do we have here in the arena? So every video board is new. Uh, there are six uh, main boards now. There's also a new 360. Um, and they're, they're all brand new. Some of them look kind of similar to ones in the past. The 360 and the, the, the um, North and South look very similar, but resolution wise, they're actually twice as big. Uh, surface area wise, they're slightly bigger. So uh, the East West scoreboards are now uh, that size as well. And then there's, there's two in the corner as well. So. Definitely a lot to look at, a lot to play with, too. And uh, it's, it's really cool looking when they're all going at the same time. One of the, and we have some new things coming up this year, one that I'm personally excited about for one of our longtime sponsors, Gary Hirsch, who has been here since day one. He and his wife, Nancy, have their great seats up in the Loge area. And, you know, for years, I've been saying, man, I wish we would have a dot race or something like a dot race here. You have some exciting news about something fans will be able to see this season at Allen America Stadium. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we've been working with uh, with Gary and, and Hirsch's Meat Market on a, a steak race, which is going to be kind of similar to the old dot race. So it'll be a it'll be three steaks uh, hopping around the ice and, you know, each one representing the section and that section will win something cool. So 
it's really cool. You know, we've seen some some previews of it. I I don't know if it's going to be ready for this Saturday or not. That's a you know, it's a really cool looking animation. We want to make sure that we get that right 100% the first time. So, uh, but it'll be ready very soon. And uh, if not by opening night, certainly by next week and hopefully. So we're really excited about that one. There's some other animations too that uh, I'm keeping in the back pocket for opening nights that uh, I think uh, people are really going to like. So one thing I've always wondered like about the dot race uh, is, is how do how do you pick who the winner is? Is it like you <laughs> like... I'm a fan of yellow today. I'm yellow is going to win. Or, you know, how do you pick, or it, it, it maybe, uh, you know, maybe it's you go with red two times in a row. In this case, maybe you go with the T-bone two times in a row, but how do you pick who's going to win that race? It's pretty random, honestly. You know, I, don't, I just, uh, you know, I kind of balance it out a little bit or, you know, some other teams, maybe they have one racing thing where that one never wins. You know, when I worked for the diamondbacks, it was the, the Mark Grace bobblehead never won the race, you know, type thing. So they kind of just balanced it out. Okay. You know, these three will win evenly and then this one won't win. So I, it's, it's mostly random. <laughs> How about the lighting in the building? I've just noticed, you know, watching those immense league games going on last night. Seems like the building's a lot brighter this year. Yeah, it is. Uh, the new LED lights are, are here and they were actually just working on them yesterday. So honestly, they really haven't been 100% completed just yet even. So that's another thing we're learning and, you know, it's going to be ready by Saturday, but we, you know, we're definitely still learning it. So they look really great though. Uh, we can do a lot of fun stuff with them too. Uh, we've, we've seen them turn this whole place red. It looks really awesome. Uh, we see them kind of a red and, and blue look too. So kind of make like a, you know, Americans flag type of thing. So uh, a lot, a lot of fun stuff to do with that. And then, yeah, it's definitely lit up a lot better. And, you, you know, a problem we had in the past was shooting fans in the upper sections of the bowl because the shadows were up there and I don't see any shadows up there now. It's very even lighted in there now. So it's going to be a lot, it's going to be great for crowd shots too. And besides all the color stuff. So yeah, it's, it's, these upgrades are just amazing. You know, the, uh, the videos are always cool, especially like the opening night video for the players. Um, are you done with that yet? And I mean, it's, it's what's tough is, you know, a lot of times, you know, coach will change his mind. No, I don't want to do this or I want to do that. Or, I've, you know, players, I, I don't want this song involved in whatever. I want to add this in, you know, each, each team each year puts their own spin on how that goes. Are you done with opening night video yet for the team? Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> we won't be done until maybe a few hours before the game. So <laughs> I've got a little help with from, from Wicked Apple Studios on that. And, you know, I think there's a few interns helping as well. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, some of those things don't get done until right up to a few hours before. Well, I'll say you don't get enough credit for what you do. You do really great work, uh, whether it's building graphics or what you do in the audio video room and, and, and making things look great up on the video board. But also... You know, you're helping us out the sales side this year, too. Uh, you had a couple of nice big sales in there. So, you know, welcome to Team Everything. Uh, if you work in minor league sports, you're going to wear a lot of hats, and I know you do as well. Yeah, I, that's, that's such a good point. And, you know, the, the story I always tell people is, you know, during the pandemic when I worked for the, the Lake County Captains at first, uh, I actually umpired a game, a high school game that was at the, uh, the stadium uh, because their umpires didn't show up. And, I had, I had never umpired a game before. I'm not really a huge baseball guy either too. So, I, you know, I know the rules, but I didn't really know, know the rules. So didn't have any of the gear. I had to stand behind the pitcher and call balls and strikes from there. So <laughs> it is a, it is a do everything, you know, that's kind of the exciting part. That's kind of what I like about it too, is, you know, it's, it's not the same thing every day. It's, it's something new and every year's a little bit different. Last thing for you, what are you most excited about for opening night, which is now just days away? Oh gosh, so many things. Um, I'm really excited to to see how the app uh, connects with the game day too. Uh, that's something else I've been working on. Uh, I think fans are really going to like that. Uh, I could even even show you a little little experiment here if you have if we have a few minutes. I don't know. Do you have a time limit on this thing? Okay. So uh, so I've been working on the app too. Hopefully you all have downloaded it and everything. But uh, I want I'll show you off the the trivia thing. Hopefully my computer can uh, do Zoom and play music at the same time. But uh, you go to the app and you you do the game day fun thing. You'll should get this screen, which means your phone's listening for a specific song. And uh, I think I can play it. Yeah, so hopefully you can hear that. Hopefully it's not too loud. But uh, your phone will listen for it. In about 10 seconds in, it'll connect. That is amazing. Right, theme song there. 
There you go. So you see my phone actually recognized the song and launched this trivia game. So it'll start in about 30 seconds, but uh, we'll have some prompt with Floyd and Lee to tell fans to, hey, get your phone out, press the game day fun thing, and then it'll launch this thing. Your phone will listen for that song and it'll connect. So it'll uh, about 25 seconds, we'll all play a trivia game together. Now, what, what else can we find on that app? Because I know that's, that's a, a big uh, uh, pet project of our, our president and Governor Mike Waddell. What else can we find on that app, Casey? Yeah, so that's, that's one of the things that connects to the game day. The other thing is the, uh, the light show uh, feature, which, again, works very similar to the way the game day fun is. You'll, you'll click it when Lee or Floyd prompts you to, and, and you'll it'll listen to the music inside the bowl and connect with your phone's flashlight to our to our open videos and things like that. So that's a really cool feature. I uh, haven't tested that one out just yet, but it'll be ready in time, hopefully for Saturday. Uh, things, you know, just it's a uh, big thing about it is it's taking all of our things, which have been a bit spread out, you know, and just bringing them all into one place. So our, our roster, our schedule, uh, our team store, you know, news, social, uh, the auctions that go up on Dash, you know, uh, even just going straight to your ticket page with uh, the Ticketmaster, you know, we really wanted to build something where uh, everything is just in one place and just a couple clicks away instead of having to, you know, bookmark web pages and, and go a few clicks. So, you know, it's a it's an age of convenience thing, and I, I think it turned out really great. So, big shout out to the uh, Olympa and Q folks for helping me out with that. Well, we're saving the trees, man. You can get the roster on, on the app now. Uh, you, you can go by customer service, obviously, but um, that's one of the great things because, you know, it frustrated me this year. I went to see baseball games, and they don't give out the, the little programs anymore with the rosters, and I'm like, who is that guy? You know, I want to know the information. You go to the Americans app, and you can get that. Casey, thank you for joining us. Great stuff. I can't wait until Saturday night. All right. Thanks, Tommy. All right. Casey Rusick, we're back with more in a moment. The All-Americans are North Texas's pro hockey team. Four championships in the last nine years. The red is back on the ice at 100% capacity this season. Free parking, fast action, and great seats available now at allenamericans.com. The Americans host the Wichita Thunder Saturday at 7.05 and on Sunday at 2.05. For tickets, go to theallenamericans.com. Allen Americans Pro Hockey. Live in the red. Welcome to Around the ECHL. Tommy Daniels, pleased to be joined by the head athletic trainer. And I know I'm selling you short. I'm sure you have a much, much better title. Uh, we know him as Duton. I've known him since he was a kid, going all the way back to the 09-10 season. And look at him, all grown up now. And the head athletic trainer for your Allen Americans for a second season in a row. I know you did an incredible job last year. Uh, it was such a challenge for everyone. Does it feel a little bit easier this year or is it, is it tougher? So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely um, a smidge easier this year. I mean, we still have certain protocols in place that, you know, that kind of help like protect the guys and make sure the guys are still protected from a COVID standpoint coming down from our league and from our organization. But yeah, definitely not easier than it was last year is because, you know, obviously last year we didn't have a vaccine available and no, and then this year, you know, having the vaccine available and, you know, the league kind of, you know, it, if you're over a certain percentage of vaccination, which we are at this current point, um, you still have to take precautions, but at the same time, you know, you're allowed to kind of be back in the normal hockey operations as you were before. Um, so it definitely is a lot easier this year. It's, it's definitely made it to where, you know, it's easier on the organization, myself, and the fans as well. There's been a lot more fan interaction now because of it. Um, and it's just, uh, like I said, it's still going to it's still gonna be, have its challenges from time to time, but it's definitely going to be a lot easier than it was last year for sure. Obviously, I'm not going to ask any names, but how many unvaccinated players are each team uh, in the ECHL allowed to have? There re so there really isn't a limit per se, um, but, you know, the league basically has the same standard that most um, like the NHL does and the American Hockey League and, the, you know, the pretty much every league in, you know, professional sports league is doing is you have to be over 85%. And as long as you're over that 85% threshold, then you can still maintain your operations. Once you get below that, then, you know, then you have to start going back to the same precaution we, and rules that we did last year. So, a lot of teams I know have tried to keep it to where a lot of their guys are vaccinated. It's like it's a, it's a very team by team basis. So I mean, if you want 
kind of a rough number depending on how, it, it, how many guys you have. You you maybe afford to do one or two depending if your team wants to do that. But at the end yeah. of the day, it's up to the organization itself whether if they want to get a, having a vaccinated guy or not. But there isn't a limit, but there's a penalty per se because it, because it, it brings down your percentage of vaccination people. So um, it just it, it's just a team by team basis. So last year they were in the bubble, and we know it was you know. They were gated off downstairs. They could walk in a certain way. They were getting, you know, tested from you immediately when, when they walked in the door. What is it like this year? Can these guys, can they go with the, anywhere they want to eat? Can they do what they want to do? Can they be out in public? Can they go to the mall? What's the difference from last season to this season? So, I mean, it's record. So if they're vaccinated, then they basically are allowed to live their daily lives. Now, it is recommended that, you know, if they're in a big crowded area or they don't know vaccination statuses of other people and things like that, then that they have to take more precautions. But, you know, if you're vaccinated, you know, you're basically allowed to live your normal life with precaution, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, you know, and it, it depends on the situation, you know, the league doesn't want us, you know, having guys around people that are unvaccinated, things like that. So guys have to be smart in how they do things and how they, you know, live about their lives. But luckily our league is allowing guys that basically, you know, if you're vaccinated and you take, and you take proper precautions, you can live your daily, you can pretty much live as you were, um, so yeah, so it's definitely a lot. You know, it's definitely easier for the guys that are that are vaccinated. It can kind sure. of operations. As far as things like in the locker room, um, we're still pretty fairly strict on game days on how we, um, you know, operate things around here. You know, guys will still have to go through their certain entrances. The visiting team has to go through their certain entrance. Um, only people that are vaccinated are allowed to be anywhere near the locker room, anywhere in the hallway, things like that. ECHL officials, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So from that standpoint, you know, there's still a quasi quasi bubble. You know, so. To speak in you know on game days and when there's more people around and and you know on practice days but you know as long as as long as you're vaccinated and that you're approved for that then you know it's kind of business as usual so for the unvaccinated player they're out on the ice together in practice every day they'll be out there you know on the ice together during the games he'll be on the bench next to the vaccinated players so what changes from the time they leave practice for the unvaccinated guy until he's back on the ice again. He basically lives, lives under the same restrictions that a player that was that players did last year. If you're unvaccinated, you're treated as a guy who has to adhere to the same protocols that players did last year, such as you're only allowed to go to certain certain approved restaurants, you're only allowed to go to only certain places, you can't do any team events, you can't do any fan events, you can't do anything related, um, you know, Pretty much, you're you're in your own little bubble, like like you were, like guys were last year. That's pretty much what it comes down to if you're unvaccinated. So, it makes life very hard for those guys that are unvaccinated. Um, but unfortunately, it's something that we have to do to make sure that everyone is safe and that we um, are maintaining and playing as many games as we possibly can. So, when he's at home, he can't go to hang out with his with his buddies, the, the vaccinated guys. He has to stay on his own. Yep. Exactly. He has to stay on his own. He has to be by himself and he can't be, and he can't be around anybody that is, he can't be around anybody that's vaccinated on the team. Like How does it work on the bus for travel? So usually what we'll do is we'll kind of make kind of a little area in the back of the bus to where what we'll do is, you know, we keep, he had, so he has to wear a mask the entire time while he's on the bus. Um, he can blow it real quick for a drink or something like that or grab a bite to eat, but he has to wear his mask the entire time. And what we do is, is we're going to try to do our best to basically keep it like six, like basically keep, keep him six way, 50 feet away, or maybe six feet in front of the bus, depending on how the bus setup is going to be. And he's going to be away from the team as possible can. But the main thing is he has to be masked up for the entire trip that he's on the bus with us. What about on the bench? Does he have to sit further away from, from other guys or how's that going to work? No, on, on the bench, according according to the protocol, they, they are they're because they're playing, they are allowed to not have it wear a mask because they get be separated. So um, on the bench and in practice, everything is business as usual. But once he leaves the practice, and when it comes to travel, he has to be on his own. Okay, so this may be a dumb question, but in in this world, there are no dumb questions anymore. Absolutely, there's not. <laughs> so they're out on they're out of the ice. This unvaccinated player could be from any team. We'll say an unvaccinated player from Idaho. He gets out there in the ice and he gets into a fight with someone, right? I mean, does yep. he have a, a a thing on his his helmet that says "I'm unvaccinated," so people <laughs> avoid and, and try not to to fight him, or how does that work? 
that that's a question that's above my head. I'm completely all honest. right. That's, I had to ask. I mean, I mean, I, de I definitely, I definitely see your. I mean, you, you bring up a very good point, and I know, and I and I definitely feel what you're saying 100. percent And yeah. yeah, that's a question that unfortunately I don't even have the answer to. Okay, well, no worries. I just had to ask because I thought, you know what, in this day and time, oh, um, I agree. nothing would surprise me, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That's not a bad idea though. Putting like a green sticker or red stickers. Of course, with a red sticker on our helmet, it might not fit too well. But but the sticker well, <laughs> on something like well, that. <laughs> Joe Ernst, if you're watching and you do that, they do put the sticker on. I want credit. I'll even take a little cut if if there is a little money involved in this. I'd be more than happy to take a cut of it. Uh, no, in all seriousness, you've done an amazing job. You know, going back to last year, dealing with all what you had to do. Um, you know, kind of the last thing is for, I guess, for fans who ask me every day, am I going to be able to get an autograph from a player this year? Am I going to be able to stand in the high five line, you know, when, when the players come out? You know, what if they're going to a restaurant after the game and there happen to be fans there? Can fans approach them? Because, again, the fan might be vaccinated, so it's okay, right? But, again, how do you know that that fan is vaccinated? Do you, is the player going to say, Yes, I'll sign your autograph. Yes, I'll talk to you, but I need to see your vaccination card first. So, 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 you know, the, the organization themselves has done a very good job as far as, you know, we're, we're, we're doing the best that we possibly can with the things that we have to make players available to fans. And, and, and cause the number one thing that fans love with our team is that, you know, that we give great fan experiences and that, that we have close to the fans. So sure, the sure. events that the events that we're going to be doing this year are going to be centered around basically, you know, Per our league protocols, any fan that's going to be around the player needs to be vaccinated. So any type of plan, fan event that we do, fans are going to have to present at the time that they get there. They're going to have to present the vaccination card, whether it's through either a picture or the personal card, like a hard copy of the card, we'll have to present to an American representative at, at, at the time, and they'll be allowed to come to the event. Um, we're, we unfortunately can't be allowing to vaccinate individuals around players. That is not our, that is a league rule. That is not our rule. That is a league rule. And so they won't be able to be around players, unfortunately. Um, and the high five line is still being discussed as far as I'm not sure how we're going to run that route, but um, you know, we're going to be going through the same tunnel as we normally do. So I'm hoping, hopefully we'll be able to figure that out and, you know, kind of get things so the fans can have the access, but, uh, but yeah, so um, pretty much this year, we are going to have more fan events. Their players are going to be more available to the fans and, you know, they're going to be more times where they can see them as they did last year. However, it's only going to be for those that are vaccinated due to the protocols that, that we are under, unfortunately. How are we looking health-wise going into the weekend? Looking very, very good. Um, I, th I think that we're going we're gonna to have, we're going to, it's going to be, you know, pretty much healthy all the way. We look good, um, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, the fans should be excited. It's going to be an exciting air, fun team to watch. A lot, a lot of veteran leadership, a lot of, you know, young guys looking to prove themselves. So um, definitely a lot more toughness to um, that I've seen to that Marty. That is, so I think that it's going to be very entertaining for our fans to come out and watch and that uh, they need to go ahead and get their tickets because it's going to be a show. And I understand we have a new defenseman coming in. Yes. Um, what is that guy's name? Honestly, I don't, you don't have to worry. I'm not going to, I didn't mean yeah, to put I, you on the spot. Yeah. I heard about it. I don't know his name yet. I heard about it. But I don't know his name yet. So that, um, that just gives everybody a reason to tune yeah, in tomorrow exactly. to social media to find out who we have. Hey, did I leave anything out? Is there anything else I should have asked? No. I mean, you hit everything, you hit everything on the line, Tommy. It's, um, you know, like I said, we, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, we, we, we want to get to a point where, you know, all of our fans have the ability to see all of our players that we can get back to normal doing things like that. However, you know, th this is a very, you know, we got to take baby steps to get back to. We, we don't want to take one giant step forward and then take, you know, three big giant steps back. So the protocols that we have in place are ones that, you know, that, that help protect our players. They help protect our staff. They help and, and, you know, do everything to make sure that we know that we play games and that everybody is protected. So luckily, like I said, you know, the biggest thing that fans need to know is that, you know, yes, we're going to have fan events this year, you know, check, be on social media, be on the website, be around everything to make sure that you're aware of what's going on and, and that, um, you know, and to follow us on everything that, that way you can stay up to date and everything and all the email list, things like that. We're going to have these events out and our and a wonderful staff will make sure that, you know, you have all the information you need as far as what to bring your vaccination cards, things like that. And um, it's going to be good to go. Like I said, it's going to be, it's going to be, we're trying to get back to normal, but you know, we have to take those baby steps first, walk before we can run kind of thing. Jordan Dutton is his name. I don't think I've ever called him Jordan. Uh, I've known your nickname since day one. If somebody wants to, do you have a Twitter? Did, can people follow you on social yes. media? Yes, um, it, it's just um, at jdutton4 is my, uh, is my Twitter. And Instagram is uh, dutes, D-U-T-E-S 44. 
at the dudes 44. Now you were at Texas tech when Mahomes was there, correct? Actually, I just missed him. He was, oh, he was, man. He was literally the year before me. Um, but yeah, but th- th- there was definitely um, a lot of Mahomey madness there at Texas tech at the time. He was definitely, you know, you know, I mean, at the time he was a very, very, an amazing big 12 quarterback, but nobody could have predicted that he was going to be the absolute MVP and stud that he is now. So it, it's cool. It's cool to see an old red Raider, you know, make some waves and um, make some waves in uh, the NFL. Yeah. Best quarterback in the NFL. Uh, if you believe that I, I do, I think in that's uh, a lot of people would still say Aaron Rodgers. You can't, you I know, don't know. T- Josh, Josh Allen start, starting to make an argument now. <laughs> I don't he know. Is. He, I didn't want to go there. I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to jinx anything. <laughs> you know what? Say no more. Say no more. I understand. Say and no you more. can't forget the old man, Tom Brady, who's still playing pretty well oh, in his man. mid forties. He, he, he may not give you MVP numbers, but you know what? In the playoffs, he's there. And, and, and it, it's just, it's going to be in, you, you will have to go through Tom Brady to get to a Super Bowl. It doesn't matter what year it seems like, whether it's an AFC championship or anything like that, or in the Super Bowl, you have to go through Tom Brady to get to the Super Bowl. So I definitely agree with you. Absolutely. And as usual, you are gold, whether it's on radio, on Zoom, whatever. Jordan Dutton, uh, he is greatness. He is our head athletic trainer, and he has done an amazing job over the last couple of years to keep us safe and healthy during the pandemic. Dudes, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you, Tommy Boy. Look forward to seeing all the fans back in the stands. Looking forward to opening night, and hopefully I can see everybody and wave everybody, and uh, it's going to be a good season. Everybody should be excited. Here we go. Another Red, White, and You podcast. If you're looking for a great night out with your friends or family or co-workers, get over to Allen and enjoy America's Pro Hockey. We're North Texas's team that won four championships over the last nine years. Free parking, great seats, and a party that'll make you want to keep coming back again and again. The Americans host the Wichita Thunder Saturday at 7.05 and on Sunday at 2.05. For tickets, go to theallenamericans.com. Allen Americans Pro Hockey. Live in the red. Welcome to the Red, White, New podcast. Oh, what a good-looking guy on the screen right there. Coming back to Allen after a three-year absence, it is like old home year. Uh, Costello's back. Combs is back. Roy is back. Asichuk never leaves. (laughs) You know what? It's going to be a fun year. Uh, What's been a crazy year, uh, crazy crazy couple years for the Allen Americans and their fans, but it just feels right seeing number seven back here in Allen again. How have you been? I've been good. You know, I've just been keeping busy with myself back in Canada and uh, just been working in the mines pretty much in Saskatchewan there and was, was in Alberta for about 10 months. But now I'm just, Marty gave me a call uh, about a couple of weeks ago asking me if I wanted to come back and I never pass up with the opportunity to come back to Texas. Well, I know your mom's got to be happy. I know Karen Roy's got to be happy. Yeah, she definitely is. I had a good talk with them before I decided to come back. She's definitely looking forward to uh, to watching the Allen Americans play and myself. And it's definitely exciting. So you, you know, if you look at your numbers and, and I, you know, especially from the playoffs a few years ago, you were one of our top scorers uh, going back to one of those championship years. And, you know, you've always been a really good offensive defenseman. I know you got some opportunities in the American Hockey League when you were sitting home the last three years, not playing hockey, did you ever think to think to yourself, where did things go wrong? Uh, not too often. I was kind of going through a bit of stuff back home, but uh, I definitely needed the break mentally, I feel. And, uh, you know, like uh, I didn't think I'd get an opportunity to come back, you know, two, three, three years later, you know, it's definitely a great opportunity. And, you know, I'm really, really privileged to have the opportunity to come back and, uh, you know, I'm trying to make, make the best and the most out of it. You know, I'm trying to help this team win hockey games. That's the main goal. You know, we have a, a young squad and I'm one of the older guys. Usually I'm one of the younger guys, but uh, you know, it's, it's definitely looking, getting pretty exciting. No, well, let me, let me also clarify. He says he's one of the older guys. He's still 26 years old. So it's not like you're 30 or Costello, who still looks like he's 17, but he's now in his mid thirties, yeah. but you're right. You are one of the guys that have, you know, have been here, you've won championships, you know, you know, this team, you know, the city, uh, how did it feel to step back onto the ice at the Allen event center? Uh, it felt good. You know, all the memories came back, came flooding back, you know, it, uh, 
it's always a place in my heart, you know, especially I was fortunate enough to uh, win the Kelly Cup my first year pro. And, uh, you know, I think back about that every day whenever June 9th hits, because that was the day we won it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely nice to be back. Everything's different here. There's all all different people. It's all new to me, but like, it's like it feels like home. And I'm, I've been here two weeks now and I'm enjoying every second of it so far. So give us your scouting report on the team on the ice. Uh, you mentioned you and, you know, Costello and Asichuk and Combs, uh, some of the, the older guys or uh, the guys that have some experience. But give us your scouting report on what you've seen so far. Uh, we're definitely going to be a quick puck moving team. You know, you know, uh, Marty builds the same teams, you know, get pucks in. And then he's a high scoring offense kind of guys. The young guys look all look good coming up and uh, you know we have a good group of guys so far you know they they welcome me in and uh, we welcome all the older guys here we've got meetings about these these young guys and it's really exciting you know it's going to be really exciting to play in front of fans I know re past couple of years with COVID going on there was no fans you know and it's it's going to be nice to see them back especially but the team's going to be fast and and young. Who are you playing with who's your defensive partner? Uh, we kind of have six right now and we've just kind of been rotating so far and uh, you know we just see how it goes when game time comes it's usually when you find out we know you're you're a really good offensive defenseman uh, and no no doubt this team you know lost some big numbers when Les Lancaster went to went to Europe they had 64 points last year still think he should have been the MVP um, came in runner up do you are you feeling that pressure to get out there and, and score and, and put up big numbers? Uh, I definitely don't have any pressure. You know, the, the thing on my mind is just to help this team win hockey games. You know, that's the main thing. Points will come when they do come. But uh, like I said, it's just it's team first before uh, personal goals. You know, the goal every year for every team, you know, is to try win the cup. You know, and that's something that I want to do for the guys that have not won it here. You know, it's it's a definitely a special thing to do. And I'm hoping by uh, June or whatever it is that we can be raised, you know, win that cup. You know, that's the goal this year. You chose number seven. We know that was your the, the number on your back for, uh, you know, a few years here in Allen. Did you think about uh, fresh start coming back, maybe going to a different number? Uh, no, it's just uh, Marty and, and Timmy asked me what number I wanted. And then I chose number seven because it's kind of been my number since I was in junior in Brandon. So it's uh, one of my favorite numbers and I just lucky that uh, I could have it. When you, when you told uh, your, your family that you were going to come back down and play hockey, what did they say? Uh, they're a little, they're excited for me. You know, uh, you know, like I said before, uh, it's, I'm pretty privileged to come back here, you know, especially being out for two years now or whatever it was. You know, my mom was really excited, and especially my whole family. You know, they supported me no matter what, no matter what I did. You know, it was a, kind of a tough decision for me because I was working back home and I got a truck now that I got to take, like, look after. So it, uh, uh, they support me 100%, you know, and uh, I'm just happy they, they let me come back. Now, I haven't seen you uh, in person yet seeing you here on the zoom call, but I've heard, you know, how great of shape you're in and, and obviously working in the mines. What are you, what are you weighing in these days? I'm weighing in at uh, 216 right now. Uh, wow. You know, uh, working in the potash underground, I was lucky enough in the past three, three, four weeks to lose about 10 pounds because it's hard work, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's definitely good work. You know, it keeps you in shape. Even working in the oil field keeps you in shape, just staying busy for the past year. And that was, one of the things that kept me in shape and I skated in Saskatoon a lot, you know, I had a, like a, a hockey team that my buddy let me go on the blue liners mm -hmm. and uh, they usually had games like twice a week, which was really good. And then and that really kept me in shape. How do Combs and Costello look out there together? They look good. Uh, you know, they're two veteran guys that obviously they played together. Uh, you know, they look really good on the ice. Mostly, like, all our players look good. You know, we're going to be a, a really good team, and I'm really excited for the Saturday night. Well, of course, uh, you know, I've had the privilege of playing in the Asichuk Fantasy Baseball League for the last several years with Eric Roy. So even though, you know, I wasn't seeing him face-to-face, -face, uh, there was a lot of banter. I'm telling you, that chat that goes through 
you know, <laughs> is one of the funniest. I mean, because you got the Chiro, you've got Guptol, you've got yeah. Asichuk, you've got Costello, you've got Roy, and you've got Daniels. And you know, I'm telling you, you and I, you really, you did me a solid uh, at the end of the year. It was the trade deadline day. And I was able to convince Royce to make a deal. Now, I, I'll tell you what, I think you're going to come out on top in the end in this deal. But you did me a solid by making me a trade there to at least give me a chance to uh, to win a championship. And, and uh, I tip my hat to you for that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I gave everybody a chance. I finished dead last this year. <laughs> but, but it's, you, it's crazy. You, you, made, you made some great deals at the end there. You got yeah. Kershaw. You got Acuna from me. You know, you Bro. got some... It trout. I mean, you got some really good players going into the next year. Speaking of which, who do you like in the World Series? Uh, I kind of want the Braves to win just because they haven't been there yet since 99 or whatever it was. Yeah. So I've been paying attention. I hope they do it, but the Dodgers aren't going to quit. So, you know, I, I'm rooting for the Braves for sure. Well, I can't tell you how happy I am to have you back here in Allen. I I'm look forward to hearing from your mom because – she never misses a game. She's your biggest fan. Yeah. She always messages me every game to let me know she's uh, she's listening. And uh, it, it's going to be good to hear from her again. And great to see you back on the ice. Yeah, nice to see you too. All right. All right. That's Eric Roy in the Red, White, and You podcast. <laughs>